Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to make a model of the Torrented Brothers ice cream van from Killer Clown from Outer Space. And I've started off by making a scaled down sketch and this way I can hopefully get my scale right. So it's just a matter of transferring those measurements onto some PVC board and this way I can cut out each individual piece and slowly build up the van. Now I'm actually making two copies of this so if you see any duplicates that's the reason why. So I've started off by cutting out the basics, which is the bottom piece and the top piece, or the chassis and the roof if you prefer. I already had a pair of resin wheels which are the correct scale, and this gives me something to check against as I snip away at the chassis. I did actually need to cut these in a little bit deeper, but you can see by the wheels that they do actually fit. And it's always reassuring to know that you haven't cut off too much and need to start from scratch. Next, I draw out the detail for the back of the van and cut it out. And this will sit on top of the chassis, as that will eventually form part of the bumper. The next step is to cut out the windows and make them as neat as possible, which is an almost impossible task. And then they can be popped out. The edges are a little bit rough, so they will need tidying up. And I do that by using a small file and some sandpaper. Next, I need to score around the doors. I don't actually want these to open, but I need a deep enough groove to suggest that they do. So I have the left and right side to do, and the middle, then the bottom. I decided to widen these marks with the edge of a sculpting tool, just to make it a little bit more obvious. As this material is quite malleable, and I use the back of this same tool to push down where the number plate goes, until I've created a nice even indent. And for the keyhole under the window, I did drilling using the end of this file. One of my pet hates in this life are googly eyes, but they are also very useful in the modelling world and are ideal for creating light. And there are four of those on the back of the truck and I've glued them on with super glue. And thankfully once painted you'll be none the wiser. I have this really thin plastic beading and I'm going to use this to create the trim around the windows. It's a bit of a pain to work with but hopefully it'll help enhance the detail. And that's how it looks once it's super glued in place. And now to fill in the gap with some model putty. And once that's sanded down and painted, it'll all look uniform. I've transferred the design of the side of the truck onto a fresh board. I'm going to start by cutting out the one on the left hand side, as this is less detailed, which means less can go wrong. I'm currently cutting out the door, and this is going to be inset by a couple of millimetres. As in the film, this is supposed to slide back and forth. And now I've glued it into place, it looks more authentic. I'm also going to add some beading to the windows, as I did with the rear ones. And I will tidy these up with some modelling putter later. Next, I add on this raised stripe along the side of the van. Then I use a sculpting tool to punch in a hole where the fuel fill cap goes. I've now glued on the back on the left hand side of the chassis. And now I'm filing down the wheel arches to make sure they line up. I'm going to glue in place this partition so you can't see inside the van on the wheel arch. And now it's time to start work on the right hand side. I'm starting off with the service hatch. It's going to be pretty much the same as the opposite side but with a couple of extra details. The hatch actually protrudes so I cut out a separate piece so it can be placed on top. And I made sure that the frame was slightly bigger than the hole. And then I used a sanding stick to smooth down the edges before gluing it into place. I just had to take care and make sure they lined up straight. And part of the reason why it has to be straight is that there's a horizontal strip which goes on underneath. So if the hatch is wonky, the strip will be wonky too. And once that's done, it can be glued into place. And I used these machining blocks to make sure it lines up perfectly straight. And now I can start work on the front sections. First of all, starting off with the grill. I've already cut them out with a hobby knife, but then I need to neaten them up with some sandpaper. And now that can be glued into place, and this will really add some strength to the model. Then I work my way up to the bonnet, and then the windshield, and there are a few gaps which need filling in. And I finally cut out my final two windows. They should really be a little bit wider than this, but I don't want to risk losing structural integrity. With the exception of some filling and sanding, it fits perfectly well, and the truck is starting to look the part now. For the front and rear bumpers, I heat up the strips individually, 
and wrap them around where they're going to go. And once they cool down, they're set into place. And then it's just a matter of gluing them on. I put tabs along all the inside of the roof. This is so that it can be slotted nicely into place because I don't want to glue this down so that I have easy access to the inside. But for now, I just need to round down the edges. I've cut out a large round base for the clown head to sit on. And I also add all three spotlights and the loudspeaker to the roof. That's coming together nicely. I'll scoot the clown head last. But for now, I need to concentrate on the wheels. I have this 2mm thick rod with needs holding in place. And it's just a matter of creating something which not only holds it, but also allows it to turn. And once I cut this into strips, it should do the job. I'm gluing this down with the rod in place so that it lines up. But then I have to remove the rod because I don't want it gluing into place. Then I can put this to one side to set. After that I cut the rod to side and test fit them. And thankfully they still rotate. And now to turn my two wheels into eight. I have this 50-50 silicone mix. I add two measuring cup fulls of each part and mix them together. I'm using tin foil to hold my mixture and this has never done me wrong so far. Providing you fold the edges the correct way, you'll never get any leaks. And then I carefully pour in the mixture, making sure that they cover each item completely. Although ideally you should stick the item down so they don't run the risk of floating up and ruining your moulds. It's always wise not to throw away your mixing cup, as you can use it to test see the silicone has set, and in my case it has. So it's just a matter of unwrapping it and having a closer look. I just need to cut away the excess silicone at the back of the tyres and then they should be able to just pop out. And as you'll be able to see shortly, they have been perfectly cast. For the next stage we need to mix up some resin. On this one cup will fill up two tyres. I need to add in a few drops of this activator for the resin to work. And this basically starts the curing process. After a good mix, it's ready to pour in. Then it gets put to one side for a few hours to cure. Resin is quite expensive and you always need to mix more than what you need. So it's always a good idea to keep an old mould to one side so you don't waste any of the overspill. Now we can pop these out of the mould and they're being cast perfectly. Now I just need to make six more. The back do need drilling out so you can attach the rod to them. Like so. Let's see how that looks when it's on the van. That looks good to me. And now it's time to start work on the one thing I've been dreading. And that's making the clown heads for the top of the van. I'm going to make up the basic form by crushing up this tin foil. And then it's just a matter of scooting milliput around it. Since milliput is quite sticky, you can't do this in one go. You have to work on a section, let it set, then work on another section. So that you're always building it up and slowly adding to it. I keep referring back to the reference photo so I can make little adjustments. And then slowly but surely I build up the face. And I do my best to smoothen it out and remove all traces of my fingertips. And then finally I can attach it to the base. And now I need to make a couple of copies because I don't want to have to go through this process again. So I mix up and pour in some more silicon. And as before I'm using tin foil to hold it all in. Although tin foil only really works with small items. Once I've left it to cure overnight, I remove all the foils. With a mould like this, you've no choice but to cut it open. So it's just a matter of using a very sharp knife and being careful. And it's not unusual for the original to get damaged during this process. And thankfully I've only lost the nose, which is a small price to pay. Because when we make resin cast out of this, they'll be a lot more durable. I secure the mould with rubber bands. Plus I put it in a tin foil tray in case we get any leaks. Once it's been filled up with resin and it's had time to set, I can take the rubber bands off. Then I can slowly ease out the clown. And he's looking quite good. I just need to cast a second one. And now I can finally make a start with the priming. Starting off with the vans. And the aim here is to make all the join lines invisible. I've loosely put on the tyre to the clown head so you can get a rough look of what it's going to look like when it's finished. And now it's onto the sanding, filling, priming and repeat. 
and slowly but surely the worst of all the blemishes should disappear. And they'd probably take the longest time out of the whole project, but it's quite essential. And then I can finally start laying down some coats of white paint. And since this will take a while, I'm going to work on something else, like the clown heads. And I start off by painting the base orange, and I follow that up with a green zigzag pattern. Then I painted the upturned cone on his head. And I followed that up by painting the ice cream balls in pink. The eyes have a blue ring around them and a cross in the middle. And then the nose and lips I painted in bright red. And eventually this is what it'll look like. But that's not the only thing I've been painting. I've also done the wheels. Including the dark red hubcaps. So now there's only the van really to finish off. And first off, I added all the black trim to the windows. Then I painted the sliding serving hat silver. And not forgetting to add blue to the go faster stripe. And then it was just a matter of painting the light and other trimmings. And because the detail is so fine, I just have to go back and tidy it up. But that's all part of the process. To finish it off, I had some silver trims around the headlights. And while the headlights are painted in very light grey, the indicators are painted in amber. And as for the bumpers, they're painted in a dirty yellow. And using this piece of perfect, I measure out and cut out the windows. And once they've been trimmed to the exact size, I test fit them. And then I secure them into place with some white glue. And the main benefit of this is that any overspill will dry clear. And I won't risk using super glue as that tends to fog up the glass. And once all those are in place, I can move on to the stickers. And this is where I need to make sure my measurements are accurate. Each one is carefully cut out and stuck into place. Because this sticker goes onto an open door, I need to push it into the groove. And the rest go on one at a time. And I just hope they don't start to peel when they've been exposed under the sunlight. But glue can fix that if need be. And finally, I can add the most recognisable stickers, the Jojo logos. And now you can see what it looks like with all the windows and stickers in place. It's not quite finished yet though. There's still a few little bits to add. Starting off with the wheels. I scrapped the idea to make them rotate. As I figured they would be a lot more robust if they were fixed in position. I've left the wing mirror till the very end. I think they're going to be very fragile. And they're just shaped out of some PVC board painted and stuck on. And that's it. It's finally completed. And I present to you the Terenzi Brothers ice cream van from Killer Clown from Outer Space. This has been a little bit of a passion project for me and I'm glad I can finally check it off my list. Now I said throughout this video that I've been making two copies of this van and I have. Yeah, one is for myself and the other is for Rich Terenzi himself who, as you probably already know, drove the van in the original movie. And I figured after all these years it's about time he was reunited with it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if I can do it, so can you.